to ESPN's College Football Primetime, presented by Russell Athletic. Arizona State by a point at the end of the first half, 28-27. Welcome back, everybody. Yeah, both of these coaches trying to guarantee themselves a winning record for this season. Both of the quarterbacks are doing everything they can to ensure they got a shot at it. <laughs> yeah, they're going to make the coordinators on the defensive side work in the second half. I think right now for Arizona State, they've got to limit the big plays by Cal's offense. Cal's offense had 10 plays of 10 yards or more in the first half. And for Cal's defense, they've got to find a way to get back and do better in coverage because Brock Osweiler has shown that he has the big arm capable of going down the field. Osweiler on the right, Maynard on the left. He burned him early with his feet. Ross on the return, slips a tackle. Has the speed to get outside across the 20. Wow. To the 30, hit out of bounds, no flag. Samantha, what do you have? Just spoke with a cool, calm, and collected Jeff Tedford, as always. Pretty happy with the way his offense is moving the ball. Obviously, turnovers will kill you. But defensively, one thing you're going to want to pay attention to, they are going to put more pressure on Brock Osweiler out there, guys. Okay, so, Sam, what that means is they're going to... I'm going to they've gone into this game and with four defensive linemen in mind because of the lack of outside linebackers. Throwing out in the flat to Miles, couldn't hold it after the play fake. Yeah, these two quarterbacks that you were talking about, Mike, they, they have come out and they played well. Zach Maynard was very impressive to me. He That, that was the thing I was looking for. And and the, the way they that Maynard spread the ball around and then Osweiler recovering after the interception. Yeah. Marshall starts the second half at tailback. He gets the carry and swallowed up by Michael Kendricks, the inside linebacker, and DeAndre Coleman. Michael Kendricks, he absolutely used what I'd written down on my notes, speed and power, amongst other things. I mean, when he, when that, that time on that running play, he became faster than the tailback to the hole. Well, he showed that speed last year as an outside linebacker. They moved him inside, and it gives him a little more flexibility. Osweiler floats this one up in complete. Flag is down. Contact out there by Mark Anthony. You cannot cut off a receiver's route. That is pass interference, and that appeared to be what he did. The defense number two, 15-yard penalty, first down. Uh, there's going to be there's going to be a lot of pressure on the secondary if this offensive line can hold up. You see the six that are coming. That's the pressure that Samantha was told was going to happen. The offensive line protects, allows the ball to be thrown down the field. And when you got one on one going downfield against both of these teams wide receivers, it's going to be hard to defend them. Actually, more than just cutting off his route, got a little push in there. That's a tough island that they're out on that. That's why it's so important. If you blitz, you better get to the quarterback. Marshall, big hole. Has the speed inside the 30 to the 20. Cameron Marshall for 34 yards. DJ Campbell saved the touchdown. This is a run blitz that's coming by Cal's defense and on the left side opposite look over here on the left side look on the left side that's where the white jerseys were here's where they came in the play went opposite you see the speed of Marshall getting up the field 17 carries 91 yards for Marshall for the end zone tipped away at the last second by DJ Campbell intended for Flugrad looked like he was open in the end zone but Campbell got there in time uh, you know what this is a dangerous throw DJ Campbell playing in the middle of the field reading the eyes of the quarterback watch Osweiler see his head never moves did it it stayed on the left side and that safety comes over and should have had an interception right through his hands he has two picks this year so now second and ten out in the flat to Miles, slipped a tackle, slips another one. 
then wrapped up at the 20. The initial play was made by Josh Hill. He missed the tackle, but he slowed him down so the pursuit could get there. One of three guys in the country who has the kickoff return, punt return, reception. He's thrown a touchdown pass. I mean, this guy, they try to really put him in space. You see how the, the motion, but Cal's defense, well coached up, stayed with him across the field while he was in motion. And you've got to bring multiple jerseys to the game if you're going to tackle Miles in space. Sure do. Third and nine. Cal loads up one side of the line, and here they come. Pressure on Osweiler. And the 6'8 quarterback trying to use his strength to get out of there, but he can't do it. Kendricks led the charge again. Now yeah, it's a five-man blitz here coming, and this here is the pressure that's going to come. Kendricks, he's in there. He gets in along with Katoos from the secondary, but that's the pressure that Cal said they were going to bring. Tedford told Samantha that's what they're going to do, and sure enough, they have done it on this series. Offensive line's been successful a few times. That time, the Cal defense won. This will be a 36-yard or 46-yard field goal try. Make it officially 47 for Guru. And he knocks it through. Arizona State increases its lead to four, 31 to 27. Craig, I think you're right. This is a Pac-12 ball game. Maybe the last team with the ball wins. We haven't seen Cal's offense on the field now in quite a while. They were very hot and productive in that first half in five of their six possessions where they had scored. So Dennis Erickson's been around a lot of football games, won a lot of big games. I would say this is a big game for Dennis Erickson. He's got a year left on his contract. He said when Arizona signed Rich Rodriguez this week, at least it took him off the front page for a couple of days. And he'll be right back on there tomorrow if he doesn't <laughs> win this one. Yeah. It's the reality of coaching, man. Too much is given, much is expected. You got to sell seats, tickets to get people to come to games. It's, it's. You know, we'll talk about that throughout this second half. I want to hear from Samantha. She grew up here. In, in, in Phoenix and yep. she knows the Sun Devil Nation and what they feel. Well he's got a year left on his contract and it, it wouldn't seem prudent considering his background and his success to not let him finish what he has started here. Manual on the return. Manual on the return. Tackle by Kevin Ayers. Erickson, his greatest success came in Miami when he led the team to two national championships. After other stops, both in the pros in college, he came to Arizona State almost five years ago. First season, they went 10-3, and three, and he was the conference coach of the year. But the next three years saw ASU lose more than they won and missed a bowl game each season. This year, a fast start has given away the three straight losses, and he admitted he's on the hot streak. People are hot seat. People do not have the patience they once had. Maynard flanker screen. Beautiful pass to Jones. Jones fighting for yardage picks up almost nine. You know what? When you, what, I've known Dennis Erickson a long time. I know you have as well. Yeah. I mean, you know, Dennis Erickson's a good football coach. That's not the question. It, it, you know, what happens is these schools have to make a decision. On what's best for the university sometimes sometimes change is needed change is good both for a coach and for a school but don't think for a moment that Dennis Erickson doesn't understand football he's recruited oh, yeah. good football players here but it is sometimes change is needed well the bottom line is you have to win and you have to put fannies in the seats if you don't do that uh, certainly you might be able to get away with just one of those for a while but unless you do both consistently you're not going to be invited back, and that's just a reality of it. Second in the yard for Cal. So Fella, first down and more to the 42-yard line. Boy, every time Sofella has touched the ball, he's done something with it. There is a marker on the play. Well, as you say that, Mike, you know, that that's the second snap now because Arizona State had 16 straight, basically before Cal ever did. 
After the play, there were two fouls. Personal foul on the offense number 57. Personal foul on the defense number seven. Those penalties offset. Well, there's the personal foul on Perfect. Brian Swanky, yeah. the offensive lineman on the other side, picks up his personal foul. But that is what has plagued Burfecht throughout his career, is the stuff after the whistle. That time it was offsetting at least. Now let's see if we can, we can find him. Yep, he got punched and then he pushed back. I mean, that's that. Come on. Mm. Looked like it was all one way, didn't it? Yep. What a throw, what a catch by Marvin Jones who just snatched it out of the air. And boy, has Zach Maynard been any good tonight? 19 yards. It, it, it all works together, though. I mean, this is a result of your receivers picking you up, having confidence. Marvin Jones now, you know, again, extends his consecutive games with a catch to 37 in a row. So he's, it's, he's not inexperienced. He goes up and gets the ball. That was a fantastic catch. At 6-3 frame, he needed every inch of it. Now out to Allen. Anytime they can get him in space, they're in good shape. And Allen's forced out of bounds after a gain of eight by Shelly Lyons. And there's the flag that comes in late. Let's check this one out. Erebor. One out for Arizona State. That means they are down to one legitimate corner. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness on the defense, number one. That's a 15-yard penalty, first down. And that is the only healthy corner, Deveron Carr. Yeah, you just got to, you know, composure is so important. And Carr is out. Irobor comes back in. Okay, play's over. Place over, leave it alone. Well, I think it's mutual, though. I thought so, too. It's mutual, and I think both of these last calls were mutual. I know yep. the official's trying to keep everything in check, but look at the pressure that the Cal offense is putting on Arizona State. They run the ball, they throw it wide to, to the left side of the field to Marvin Jones, they throw it back to the wide side on the right to... Timeout, Keenan California, Allen. number one. We've got a timeout on the field. 10-18 to go third quarter. Cal driving down by four. Tomorrow afternoon on ABC, BCS bowl bids and spots in conference title games are on the line. Noon Eastern on ABC, Michigan and Ohio State renew their rivalry. And at 3.30 Eastern on ABC, Oregon battling Oregon State. Or Virginia against Virginia Tech. Also at 3.30 Eastern on ESPN, Penn State, Wisconsin. College football presented by Kay Jewelers on ABC and college football on ESPN. College football does live here. First and ten, Cal. Deep man in the eyes, Sofele. Maynard will give it to him. Sofele, great cutback, has blockers on the outside, including Maynard, who threw him a block of the corner, and Sofele picks up 11 on a play that looked like it would go nowhere. This is twice now in this football game we've seen Sofele reverse field. And, and, and what's impressive to me, and I just got a grin on my face, Zach Maynard. It's impressive what Sofele's doing, but Zach Maynard on the left side, watch what he does. He attacks, throws a block out there to clear him to get the first down. This is a fantastic job by Maynard. This is, and you hear it all the time, how a quarterback gets the respect of his teammates. Yeah. Absolutely, nails it home. First and goal, Maynard running the option, cuts it back. Just inside the four, drilled by Perfect. Now he's not big enough to go in there and take on Perfect. I can assure you of that. No, he's listed at 190. And look at Perfect. There's that emotion that they have been hoping to channel all year long. Yeah, it's okay to get up talking noise and smack. There are a lot of players who do that. Talk to smack, but when the whistle's over, it's over. Yeah. Talk all you want. When the whistle and when the ball snap, now go make a play. Now let's see what he does now. Let's see what he does if he follows it up with a play. 
They'll run it with Anderson, and Anderson off the right side for a touchdown. Nobody followed it up with a play that time, except Anderson. Yeah, here comes another flag on Burfick, and, and, and the officials absolutely are looking out for him. After the score, personal foul, number seven on the defense. Touchdown. This is when he starts to lose it, and this is where he really hurts his football team. Well, you know what? Here's where reputation comes into play. Yep. That referee knows for a fact. And and, and Burfick, not, he, you know, he pushes. Well, he went and, over to defend one of his own teammates. I, I, uh, I think it was the follow-up walk, yep. though, Mike. The referee, he, he has, you know... You know, when, when, you know, you sleep in the bed that you made, right? That's exactly it. His coach, Craig Bray, said he is a target now because of his reputation, and he was the one who earned that reputation. You got to live with it. And even if you're trying to, to protect one of your teammates or you're the guy that's pushing back after being pushed, he's going to get that flag. But we have a good game going. Oh, we do that. Back with more of that. ESPN's College Football Primetime, brought to you by the 2011 Ford F-150, built Ford Tough, and Boost Mobile, be heard. Welcome back to the desert and Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, Arizona. 15 possessions. We have scored on 11 of the 15. Eight touchdowns and three field goals, Craig. And we're on the 1,000-yard watch again. They're at huh. 597. They're on pace for 998. I love those 1,000-yard nights. You want to get there instead of just the 990s. That's the gold standard, isn't it? <laughs> Let's see which defense has a chance to step up. And after the personal foul penalty, this kick will go out of the end zone. Let's check in with Samantha Steele. Samantha? Guys, Montez Burfecht obviously frustrated coming off the field right there, but it was those first couple of seconds that are going to determine how he's able to bounce back. He came, sat on the bench, threw his gloves down, took his helmet off, had some of the players guarding him behind so the camera couldn't see him. But then suddenly some of the guys seemed to start to be able to get to him, trying to encourage him, finally saw a smile on his face. It seems like he might be able to bounce back from that early frustration, guys. Well, they're going to need him, obviously, Samantha, if they're going to win this ball game, He's got to make plays for that defense. There's no question about it. Osweiler fakes the end around. Now he wants to throw it to Miles. Did a good job just to throw it away because Miles was covered by D.J. Campbell. Well, again, now that last drive for Arizona State, it wasn't just Vontez Burfick. Three personal foul plays against him. And he went over to defend his teammate. You know what? Cal is doing a phenomenal job of luring them in to creating these opportunities. Arizona State's got to have more discipline and composure and know they're getting sucker punched. Perfect is the one who is being pushed after plays this year. Arizona State trying to run inside and nothing doing against DeAndre Coleman, who just swallows up Cameron Marshall. Well, the running game has not been what has hurt Cal's defense. It's been Brock Osweiler being able to go back and throw the ball down the field. And we and remember what Jeff Tedford said. He was going to put more pressure on Osweiler when he's throwing the ball. Here comes the linebacker blitz, and the pass underneath is going to be very, very close. They need to get to the 30-yard line exactly for the first down. And they got there as Ross makes a little in cut, and Osweiler hit him perfectly. You know, one of the great advantages for Osweiler is the tallest quarterback in the country at 6'8". The receivers can see the ball longer. They can actually see the ball some of the time when it leaves his hand. Yeah, immediately they can see it. I played on the reverse side of that 5'10", Doug Flutie. <laughs> you might not have seen it when it first left his hand, but you knew it was coming because you could hear it. Yeah. <laughs> Osweiler and incomplete intended for Willie. Big tall quarterback, basketball playing, turned football guy, 6'8. Philip River, uh, Stephen Rivers at 6'7. I mean, there's some, there's some 
He's got a good throwing motion for a big guy. Remember Dan McGuire? He had a he, he was a tremendous specimen at 6'8, but he had a very slow throwing motion. You know what? I think I might Mike like that ball right there. I might like his throws to the side. Miles lost it, but they're gonna whistle the play dead. <laughs> Now the Cal players complaining that they took it away and the officials won't give it to them. Now they're going to say forward progress was stopped. Well, you just got to know that when you get over there and the players around you get down, two hands on it and get down. Listen for the whistle. But what official, what officials have started doing is coming in after the play and saying forward progress was stopped, even though the whistle wasn't blown. So really, even listening to the whistle is not going to always tell you anymore. Yeah. That, that's sort of a bailout position for them. Yeah, but I, I, you better have a good memory of what's going on. And if you're carrying the ball, know when your journey's over, get down. Osweiler under pressure on third and five, completes the pass. Another good throw to George Bell. And these defenses simply can't slow the other team down. Yeah, you know, I'm very impressed with the way Brock Osweiler's throwing this football. Yeah, Noel Mazzone, that offensive coordinator, I've always liked him. I enjoy visiting with him. He's a smart guy, been around a lot of football. He knows, he, I mean, this is not just a, uh, you know, uh, scheme offense. I mean, it's one of those deals where he gets yeah. the matchups, he teaches it, he, he's just a good coach. Pokey pokey was the word I was coming up with. I couldn't get away from it. <laughs> Two words, okay. It might be hyphenated, I'm not sure. And around the Ross. He might have gotten bailed out on punctuation. <laughs> Lost a couple on that play. It'll be second and 12. And the one thing that Osweiler has done since his team fell behind, he's been able to make big long yardage plays. All right, let's see now if Cal Clancy Pendergrass, let's see what he does here. Second and passing situation. Look at how they're set up, Craig. They got four guys on the left of center, and they're all coming from that side. The pass underneath incomplete out of Ross's hand. Katus was right there defensively. I've never seen anything quite like that when four guys are left of the right guard and only one down lineman on the other side. I would say an unbalanced defensive look. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And you know what that, that I like to watch these radar defenses or the walk around defenses with the defensive line standing up before the snap. Not letting the offensive lineman really zero in on who is coming and where they're coming from. There's Pendergrass. He's another good football coach. Osweiler 50% on third down, five man rush. Hands in the pocket and throws complete to Willie. Mike Willie breaks a tackle. There is a flag down back in the backfield at the 40 yard line after a gain of 30. Holding on the offense. That's a 10 yard penalty, third down. There's a huge call. It wipes out a 30 yard gain on third and 12. Well, you know, so watch now. Now, this defense, they're going to come this direction. They're going to have responsibilities. They have to cover. Linebacker comes from the outside. So when the ball is snapped, you still have all of your lane assignments covered. And it creates a little confusion with the offensive line. Someone gets beat. Next thing you know, they're holding. Nine penalties, 96 yards against Arizona State. Now, when it comes to being good fo football coach, that, that's something that if you're evaluating Dennis Erickson, you have to look at, and it's a real number. That's a real negative yep. trend. It's been consistent, and that keeps you from winning football games. Third and a mile for Osweiler. Underneath, the throw goes to Marshall and he's going to let him try to pick it up on his own and that will bring on the punt team. To me that's a that's a player problem the penalty yard. Coaches teach 
discipline in practice all day long. You do this, you don't do that. Kids get in games and they don't have the discipline. It's a combination problem. You and, think? And, you know, yeah, and absolutely. And if I'm a coach, when I recruit a player, I recruit a smart, aggressive player. Well, that's that's absolutely right. You you recruit a guy that like Vontez Perfect, and you know he's a, he's got a short fuse. You're recruiting penalties. And this one just kicks into the end zone. A beautiful punt, 59 yards, and really a bad break for Hubner because he got off such a great kick. Get ready for bowl season with the ESPN Bowl Bound app featuring video news analysis and the latest BCS standings and weekly projections. ESPN's Bowl Bound app, free on iPhone and Android. Text BOWL to 43776 to download. Vontez Perfect will start this series on the bench after picking up two personal fouls on the same series that helped lead to a touchdown. For Cal. So fellow drilled as he got on the line of scrimmage by number six Shelley Lyons. Now how does a guy like perfect react to being on the bench. Well we'll, we'll see but I think it's the right decision. Watch the right guard. He's the one who's making the center. He's making the call to the center so that he knows when to snap the ball. Foot goes up. He touches the center. The ball is delivered to the quarterback. That's the way they communicate that. Because that right guard can look around easier without the ball in his hand. He can see the quarterback lift his foot up. He touches the center and they snap it. Here comes the blitz. Maynard gets rid of it and got it to Spencer Hagen, the tight end. Irabor. The corner out there in coverage and zone. Here at Bourne, and again, this secondary, very thin. A real concern for Arizona State coming into this game. And this is a very important series here. You know, this, this Cal offense has been spreading the ball around. I think the crowd, you can hear them, you can feel them right now on this third down. In case you're joining us late, Ira Bohr and Carr, 24 and 1, are the only two corners on this team right now. Everybody else is hurt. The backup corner is a safety. And there's no backup to him. Maynard flushed. Throws on the run and a perfect pass by Maynard. He got it to Anderson. C.J. Anderson. 74 yards for a touchdown. What a beautiful touch throw by Maynard. I asked Jeff, Jeff Tedford, a few weeks ago, Jeff, are you sure that Maynard's your guy? And he said, Craig, I'm sure he's my guy because his feet buy him time. His athleticism separates him from the other quarterbacks on this roster. Jeff knows what he's doing. He's been around a lot of quarterbacks. There's a glowing example well, of what Maynard, Tedford's talking about. Just tonight, 17 of 22, 232 yards, and he's coming off a tremendous performance against Stanford last week when he was 20 of 30. Yeah, that's when he did it against Andrew Luck uh, on the same field as Andrew yeah. Luck, so he knows he's got a lot of confidence. Now, this gives you an example, though. When you, when you look at what the defense does, they're coming off the corner to the left side. And so there's a pressure left and right, steps up and presses the pocket, and instead of just running, throws a really nice soft ball to Anderson. For the touchdown pass. That's just a dagger to a defense who's got you in a third down and trying to stop you. The quarterback buys time with his feet and then wisely, this is the maturity part. You know, when you hear the, the, the coaches say, well, we think Zach, the speed of the game, he's caught up with it. Right. That's when it slowed down. Yeah. That's that's that in the zone deal that you hear athletes talk about. And what a nice job by CJ Anderson. He felt the pressure. He looked downfield. His job is to go deep in that scramble situation. And Maynard got him behind Shelly Lyons and just floated it to him. When were you down there running deep routes? Uh, how did you know that was it's your been spot, a while. partner? It's oh, been a while. I like that. <laughs> you knew your rule. <laughs> Short guy goes long, long guy comes back. <laughs> Miles to kick to or Miles and Ross are deep to the kick. 
And all of a sudden, the lead grows to 10. Yeah, but this 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 return game and Miles very explosive in one play. He'd get him back in it. I wouldn't put a whole lot of uh, stock in a 10 point lead in this game either. Not based on what we've seen. Miles. Out to the 35 yard line. They will start from there. Here's Jonathan Coachman with the Sports Center right now. Jonathan. Uh, Mike, thank you. Here's what's happening on Sports Center right now. The Lions and Dominican Sue has apologized for his actions against Green Bay on Thursday. Sue is ejected after stomping on a Packers lineman. He says he wants to work to become a better player and professional. LSU, they continue to roll a beatdown of Arkansas 41 17. They're 12 0 for the first time in school history. Mike, back to you and Tempe. All right, Jonathan, thanks very much. And we've had, uh, speaking of Indomitian and Sue, we've had our share of pushing and shoving in this game. Arizona State needs to push with execution because the other part of it won't work for them. This is a team right now that needs to go down the field and score. Little swing pass trying to get Miles out in space again. They'll only pick up a couple. And Craig, you know as well as anybody, once you have that reputation as being a team that gets those personal foul flags thrown against you, that just begets more flags. Yeah, and so at some point, you know, you have to flush out those who don't understand that part of it and bring in clean. You know, that's that, old, that that age old deal. How do you how do you get muddy water clear? You keep adding clean water to it. Here comes pressure. Osweiler steps up. They did a great job of protecting him to get that throw off, and he throws a perfect strike to Jarrell Robinson. Katoos took him down, but it's a gain of 27. If you blitz and don't get there, you're in trouble. And, and you know what? If if you're going to go looking down the field, Jarrell Robinson's the guy that you have to find. Here comes the six-man blitz. This is great blitz pickup. Marshall's in there fighting. I mean, and look at. Osweiler, watch how he steps up into the pocket. Knows right where he's going to go with the football. This guy is a good player. They've got the ability to get back in this game. Trevor Cole, who is listed as a tight end, but is playing more of an H-back position in this offense, threw a great block on that uh, play where they blitzed six guys. He picked up somebody free and kept them off of Osweiler. Now, when you blitz, when you bring six, it's going to leave one-on-one -on -one coverage in a couple of spots. And a guy like Anderson, I mean, he's he's so good. Robinson is going to find a way to get open if you're not bracketing him. Second and nine from the gun. Marshall dragging tacklers with him to the 33 yard line. That'll bring up a third and three. Now here is the patience of Noel Mazzone right here. He's not he's not panicking, is he? He, he, you know what Noel's over there and he's thinking okay look we're down 10 points we just need a score and, and he's methodically going about it he feels the blitz pressure that's been coming doesn't want to get pass happy he'll stay balanced with it this is a very physical California defense one of the best in the Pac-12 and they've been ripped pretty good tonight Marshall again first down and more inside the 25 yard line they came in here number one in total defense in the Pac-12, giving up only 326 yards a game. Well, they have gone well past that tonight. Their previous drive, they had five minutes plus and went 21 yards total. So at least now they're holding on to it and moving down the field. The matriculation has taken over. <laughs> Marshall again, gaping hole up the middle. Marshall, touchdown. I don't know what miracle they use on that ankle, but he limps off. They treat him. He comes back on and pulls off a run like that. <laughs> oh, man, I'll tell you, that, that, that right there is a junior stepping up, playing for the senior brethren, and giving a great effort. We saw him on a pass protection two plays before that. Helping out on that long throw. 24 yard run, which gives him 131 yards on the night and two touchdowns, which is 18, tying the school record for a single season. 
Garut with the point after, and we're back to a three-point ball game, and we have the fourth quarter and seven seconds left to go. Uh, and remember, now Marshall had 81 yards in the previous two games, so tonight breaking out, playing with a lot of pain. Some pretty good players there. Th this run here, this is nice play call. It's blocking up front. It's pressure coming from Cal's defense. You see the six of them, but the blocking was able to push them out of their assignment lanes, creating that gap. And if you do that with a guy like Marshall, he's a big guy, 223 pounds. But look at the burst. And then he feels it. Now that, that's called smell in the end zone. And when 223 pounds smells the end zone, he's going for it. It was one-on-one -on -one with D.J. Campbell, their best safety, and Campbell didn't have a chance. Not a chance at all. Now these two offenses are getting after. Cal has 375, <laughs> Arizona State 398. We're at 773. We got a shot at a thousand, no way. I'm telling you, man. Hey, it's Thanksgiving weekend. What does it have to do with it? Right, it's a big weekend. <laughs> <laughs> it's Black Friday. There's a bargain. I was gonna say, this is no turkey. I don't know. We didn't we didn't fly all the way out here to see nothing. No. <laughs> it has been offense, offense, and then some. <laughs> Black, Black Friday points on sale. <laughs> End of the third quarter. It is a three-point thriller. back to Tempe as our Pac-12 track meet enters the fourth quarter. <laughs> We're on pace for over a thousand yards in total offense. Craig is finally going to get the uh, holy grail of offensive evenings, I think. <laughs> Cal trying to get something going on the ground. So Fella, he's been very impressive tonight as well. Time to take a look at some great teamwork. It's brought to you by Russell Athletic, Greg. Great teamwork, usually results of a smart play. Zach Maynard on the previous series when we saw the scrambling bought the time. Anderson becoming the first Cal player this season to have three scores, three touchdowns in a game. Two rushing, now one receiving. So Feli has only had 10 carries, but he's produced 69 yards. That one went for seven, so it's second and three. So Philly again dives for the sticks. He'll be about a yard and a half shy. When he was in high school, his dad was his running backs coach. After practice, he said, you've got to go the length of the field, and every 10 yards that you run, you stop and give me 20 push-ups and 20 setups all the way down the field. That's a 100-yard run with 200 setups and 200 push-ups. He said he did it every day gratefully because he knew it was going to make him a better player. In high school? In high school. Dickerson and I got in trouble at SMU one time. We had to do we had to do it, but it wasn't for <laughs> <laughs> wasn't to get better? No. <laughs> so Fella, big third down. And he got it. Boy, Craig Bray, no, the defensive coordinator, he is bringing eight up in that box now, sensing that Cal is going to try to run the football, and they're having such good success with it. So Fele being at 5'8", you just can't find him. And that leverage, the power that he has. The Arizona State defense against Cal in the last two games has been shredded. Yeah, they got throttled last year 50 to 70, or 50 to 17 in that game. And, and so this defense has been a problem in this three-game skid. Four-man rush, Maynard. Hangs in there and throws to his tight end Miller. Ball came loose. Colin Parker was the guy who ripped it out of there. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. There's another personal foul here, ref the passer. Roughing the passer on the defense number five. 
That's a 15-yard penalty, first down. That's on Yaley from the right side. He had a free run at Maynard and was late getting there. Just got to pull off. On Yaley, you see him. The ball's gone one, two, three. Oh. You, you just can't do that. And that's inexcusable. You can't you can't blame that on a coach, but uh, on, on the back side of this play, that ball is coming out. Yes, it is. No doubt. That That's football loose. was coming out, wasn't it? It sure so was. So what happens? You know, you, you, you negate an opportunity for your team. Yeah, that was just dumb. And, and, and Cal needs no help in this game. No, offense. they don't. The 44. And they want to go with the reverse to Allen, looking for a block. Grabbed by the jersey, still on his feet to the 38-yard line and knocked out of bounds. And on Yaley was the guy who pursued to the sideline on that one. Well, his brother, Zach Maynard, again, blocking downfield. You don't have to blow someone up. Blocking is about attitude and want to. Les Miles said, you got to have a guy who has that want to. And, you know, it just gets in the way. On Yaley, he, he, he just, and that, by just doing that chip block, Allowed his brother Keenan Allen to pick up six, seven yards. Second down and five. Trips wide out to the right. Arizona State appeared to get back. Maynard throws underneath to Kovan Dabosky Johnson, who is getting some rare minutes tonight. Yeah, you know, and, and Vontaze Perfect still on the sidelines, not in the game. There are a lot of Arizona State defensive players with their hands on their hips right now looking at that sideline for a play call. And, and fatigue certainly an issue now for them. And Cal's offense continues to stay in rhythm. It was enough for a first down. So Felly, the deep man in the eye, will get the call off the right side. Nice cut. Beautiful step on. 20. 15 out of bounds at the 12. He just took Deveron Carr in the corner and planned them. <laughs> you know, I, so Fele, watch how before he gets to the, the defender, he makes his move and he accelerates out and has the leverage underneath. That's a good stiff arm, right to the chest. And he pushes off with it mm. and gives a dead leg. You know what a dead leg is? You make it, you know, kind of freeze just for a moment. That's a quick dead leg. Very, very minimal pause, but he can't. <laughs> Dude. 95 yards on the ground, and Cal just shoving it right down Arizona State's throat again. And a timeout called by Maynard, and we should reiterate that the play timeout. calling. California. The play Number calling two. as well as the execution has kept Arizona State off balance. And you've got to tip your cap to Jim Mah uh, Mahalchik, the offensive coordinator. Sometimes we'll watch games and we wonder, what are these guys thinking? These plays aren't working. Well, almost everything he's called tonight's working. Got a timeout on the field. Cal driving again, already leading by three. Now let's take a look at some of the unlimited action coming up this weekend brought to you by Sprint. Ohio State and Michigan renew that rivalry at noon on ABC. Virginia Tech, Virginia to see who wins the division and goes to the conference championship. Oregon State, Oregon, then Penn State, Wisconsin at 3.30 Eastern on ESPN. Both of those teams in the top 20 in a very competitive fight for the top in the Big Ten. I think Michigan underappreciated. Voters need to pay attention to that football team, especially their defense and how good they're playing on that side of the ball. They have been exceptional in that department. Maynard flushed, in trouble, and does the right thing and just throws it away. Man, you talk about a young man that has surprised and impressed me. Beyond the line. The development that Zach Maynard has shown through this season. Not surprised, though, with Jeff Tedford as his coach. And the official explaining that this was not grounding. 
Against Oregon, that play right there, Maynard might have taken a sack. Well, you're supposed to improve during the year, and obviously he has done that. He's got him to the point now they are a very feared offensive unit. So fell a fumble. And Cal may have gotten it back. Boy, there's a lot of paint swapping going on right yes, now sir. in that pile. Cal was the first team with a shot at it. And John Tyndall, number 31, on a dead sprint to the ball after he saw it come out. Oliver Aaron knocked it away. Yeah, and I, and I think that this is one of those where Sofele knew the, he, the hits were coming, and the ball just luckily for Cal, Tyndall was there, and it went right back to him. Tyndall, the senior fullback, claimed because Will Cap has a broken bone in his leg, and he makes a big play there. First and goal inside the two. Option, Sofele. And the speed of that Arizona defense that time got out there with Shelly Lyons, number six. Boy, he just flew to the sideline. Uh, you know what? A fantastic job of Lyons using the inside out, knowing the speed, knowing where the ball was going to go. When the pitch occurs, you know, you, two guys were able to cover one on the pitch. That's to fake the pitch and then have the quarterback go up inside. Maynard would love to have that back yep. because if he fakes the pitch, he walks it. And now C.J. Anderson, the big power back, comes in. Maynard. Off the fingertips of Hagen. Covered well by Keelan Johnson. Hagen wanting a foul, but he won't get it. Yeah, I think, I think Hagen was so focused on the contact or not contact with the defender. And, and really was probably trying to use his hand to kind of yeah. keep the guy away from him. And it cost him getting both hands up for the football. Now third and goal. This is huge. If Arizona State could somehow force the field goal instead of the touchdown. Yeah, I, I'd expect him moving the pocket a little bit here, putting the pressure of the run. Blitz coming. Maynard cuts it back. He's not going to get there. Down at the two. Bradford with a solid tackle. You just you could sense the pride of Arizona State's defense here of wanting to come off their blocks in a hurry, beating the guy in front of them. Maynard, this was a well-designed play. If not for Arizona State coming off of their blocks so quickly, he'd have made it to the end zone. This will keep it a one-score game, even if the kick is good. This will be from 19 yards out. Great stand by the Arizona De State defense, which has been mugged all night, but stood tall right there. 44-38, still 9.08 to play in Tempe. And it's still whoever has the ball left probably wins this game. ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by Russell Athletic, who remind you that together we are, and in part by Chrysler, imported from Detroit. Our entire crew away from their families yesterday to prepare for this game, but we all had a terrific Thanksgiving meal last night at the Arizona Biltmore. We're thankful for our outstanding team, the great work they do every week. And if we can't be with our families, <laughs> The chance to be with the people that we trust and our friends is something we are incredibly grateful for. Thanks to all of you for your hard work all year long. No doubt. And the dinner was really good. How about that gravy cascading <laughs> down upon it all? <laughs> we saved you a bucket full. Oh, Nine oh eight to go in this ball game tomorrow night in prime time. ESPN and ABC have matchups of bitter rivals at seven forty five Eastern on ESPN at South Carolina and Clemson and at eight o'clock Eastern on ABC Andrew Luck and Stanford against the Fighting Irish College Football Primetime presented by Hampton Hotels on ESPN College Football lives here.
Thank goodness for rivalries in college football. Amen. South Carolina, Clemson. Last night, Texas, Texas A&M. Pittsburgh, West Virginia today. Classics, man. We cannot, as a college football world, give up on traditional games. Osweiler on the post, and it was dropped by Ross. Steve Williams beaten on the post. Osweiler threw what looked like a perfect ball. Oh, I tell you, this, and you know what, this, the, the deep ball by Osweiler is very impressive. Getting the coverage downfield that they'd like to have, Ross just can't, just, oh, that's a, you know, that's a very nice play, though, by Steve Williams. Well, he got a hand up there. I'm not sure he touched it, but at least it was distracting. And here goes Marshall again. Marshall down to the 44. The ball came loose, but it was after he hit. No! They're going to say it's Cal's ball, and they are outraged on the Arizona State sideline. D.J. Campbell with a hit that apparently knocked it loose, and the recovery made by Mustafa Jaleel. But Dennis Erickson is beside himself. And that Arizona State sideline collectively went really on crazy. the field is the runner was down before the ball came loose. First down. That's what it certainly looked like. That's what Dennis Erickson thought. Yeah, DJ Campbell comes in, a nice job of punching the football from behind. He still has control, control, control. He'll see it. He's down. It was close at the end. Osweiler's wanting the snap. This ball is going to be challenged. This play. Previous play is under further review. Well, ruling close, on the field was the runner was down. And, and that's so important, obviously, the ruling on the field. Great effort by Marshall. Really nice by Campbell coming up from behind, trying to strip that football. I think he still has it here. His back's down. Yeah. It was interesting. One of the officials indicated fumble, and the ball went to Cal. And the referee came in and said he was down. So the call on the field is going to be the runner was down, even though one official had ruled it a fumble. That's interesting. And, and tonight we've seen the replay official booth quick in their decisions. I don't know. That ball oh, that is starting is, to come. It's starting to move. That's a great from that angle. angle. That angle right there is starting to starting to turn around on him. Since Marshall. Oh, Initially limped off the field, he has come back to run for 96 yards on seven carries. Now that ball is, uh, appears it is loose, but is it, again, is it definitive? Can you tell one <laughs> Indisputable. Way or right. Appears won't get it done. No. Like that, that angle there looks like he, he more than likely held on to it. Oh, I tell you, right there, that, that's a that's shot right there. Coming that's loose. coming loose. And, and, and again, the replay officials are looking at the same shots that we are all looking at. I think that ball's out. Well, I'm really, here's one thing I'm thankful for. I'm not making this call. <laughs> that's too close. <laughs> well, I, Again, their, their goal was to review it, minute and a half, two minutes max, and come out with a ruling. Minute 40 at this point. It looks like the ball is coming loose, but when you just, just when you use that phrase, that it looks like it's coming loose, it's not indisputable. And that's the standard you have to meet. The call on the field, was he was down so it has to have indisputable evidence but he wasn't down before the ball came loose and I don't know that you can say that Cal's defense has done a nice job of being around the ball all night and you just got to know as a runner receiver you got to you got to just be smart nowadays with, with the football because these defenses are taught second guy in first game everybody's say, punching right. the football and a lot of guys now, it's the first guy in. You see guys yeah. tackling the ball rather than going for the body, or in this case, from behind, they're going to reach for that ball. And that's why you have a lot of big plays from runners and receivers sure. tackling the ball instead of the player. Exactly. 
And now the crowd starting to hoot and holler. They want a decision here. Yep. Of course, they want a decision that's going to go their way too. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in the the camp of the Boo Birds <laughs> on this one right now. Keep the game going here. There's a lot of times when it lasts this long, you are also looking for ball placement. What yard line would it be? After further review, after further review, the ball became loose prior to the runner being down. There was clear recovery by the defense. First down, California. What a huge play in this game. Arizona State had moved into Cal territory. And the ball comes loose. That's a tough break for Marshall, who's had a terrific game. But it was the right call. I, I think, think so. We agreed up here. Yeah, Craig, I agree with your point on on timing. You want to get it done as soon as possible. But I want to I, I want to see no matter how long it takes. I want to see him try to get it right. And I think they did. So, fellow. Man, he runs fast, doesn't he? I mean, he, he runs the corner. He'd be a good guy on the on the quarter sprint four forty relay, relay yeah. yeah, on the uh, either curve. Yeah, glide the curve. <laughs> he, he and his speed forces defenders to go full speed. They can't cut as quick as he can. They overlap and create gaps. Cal right now is thinking we're up by six. Any kind of score, we're up two possessions. So Fele already 111 yards. That gives him 1,231 for the season. He came into this game fourth in the Pac-12. Gonna improve his status here. And some more off the right side. What a great cut. 40. Look at the speed and the elusive just down to the 28-yard line. Uh, so it, watch, watch the setup, though, for what they did on the offensive line and the way that they moved them. Michael Mitchell Schwartz, they took 72 and put him around on the right side. See him? He looks like a tight end, 72 up top, and he just mugged the outside. Boy, what speed. 17 carries, 137 yards for Sofele. And the injured player for Arizona State, they cannot lose a corner, and that's who's hurt. Devron Carr, they only had two starting the game. And he's still down. The backup corner is a safety, Alden Darby. And if they go beyond that at a corner, they're going to bring in a walk-on who showed up six weeks ago to get a uniform and a hat. Carr's going to have to come out for at least one play because of the clock stoppage. And Dennis Erickson has to be wondering, will it ever stop? They had a lot of depth to start the season and just got hit with one injury after another. He won't talk about it. He will not use it as an, ex as an excuse, but it is a reason. You have guys on defense who've been playing virtually every snap in every game. And you just can't do that. People wear down. And I, like, for instance, Cal's offensive line has basically been together. That's why it's a solid offensive line. They've got their uh, offensive line coach, Jim Maholchek, who's really good. And when you have that continuity up front going against mix and match on the defense, they're going to get you. Just like that last play, Mitchell Schwartz going over playing uh, basically a tight end position to the right side and just leveraging the defense. New set of downs for Cal. Anderson is the new tailback, number nine. He's the power guy. Nice change of pace with Sofele. Comes to the outside. You know, the other thing that Allen does, number 21 on the outside, he blocks so well. Not only is he a brilliant receiver. And now for our building a program, brought to you by Craftsman. Well, Jeff didn't actually go to Craftsman and buy the tools and all, but he... <laughs> He has certainly helped in the fundraising. I'm telling you, the, the facilities out there are going to be unbelievable. A few weeks ago, I was there and had a chance to personally walk through, had the tour. 
of soon to be the stadium, the old California Memorial Stadium, really old. They're renovating it. It's going to be ready. It's going to be fantastic. The location of all of this stuff is off the charts. Cool. 100,000 square foot weight room. I mean, 100,000 100, square foot. Now, for, and I go all over and I see all these these locker rooms. The, the, there's the, the locker room. But 100,000 square feet, most people are lucky to have, you know, 20, 15,000. Uh, I mean, Florida's got a big weight room. Uh, there's some that have them, but Oklahoma State has a big one. But this is going to be from where they are or, or were. Ten years ago, they promised this to Jeff Tedford. He's finally going yeah. to get it. The Taj Mahal. He, I sit in his office and where he, he has his meetings with the quarterbacks, there's chalkboards everywhere. It's a trailer. <laughs> it's, a, it, it's a nice trailer, but it's a trailer. Well, it's going to be nice when it's done. Anderson looking for the first down. He's got it at the 15-yard line. Boy, and Cal right now trying to work on the clock, knowing that if they can get this down to maybe two and a half minutes to score anyway, they're up two scores and they give Arizona State a real problem. Now, anything they can do to keep Brock Osweiler on the sidelines is a win. That would be a good Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. And, and at this point here, uh, for sure, seven is nice, but getting points would uh, definitely help. You want to see three runs here, or you still want to see him open up the offense? Yeah, I think with uh, Sofele's success on the ground, chewing up that clock, that offensive line doing a heck of a job. Keep turning him. So fellow straight up the middle now he cuts it to the outside nothing there got maybe two yards out of what looked like nothing <laughs> Oliver Aaron tripped him up you liked him today I oh, love him. He's he's terrific I mean it's just been time and again he's got the heart of a of a champion man the way he runs the football and makes folks miss This was a big blow down here. I mean, right on the five. Oh, oh man, that's a blow. 900 yards. We're going to get there, Mike, to 1,000? I think we're going to be just shy. Maynard in the shotgun. We'll give it to Sofele again. Cuts back. They need to reach the five-yard line for a first down, so this is going to be third and five. Clock continues to run. Arizona State has all of its timeouts to use. Uh, and he's been really balanced in the way he's put it to the defense. There's a lot to the left, but I mean, it's not like he just did nothing to the right side. Yeah, averaging 10 over there. That's pretty impressive. A couple of those have been terrific cutback runs. Two of them, you're right. He's had two reverse field big runs. That just wears the defense out. Anderson in a tailback on third and five. And Anderson will lose three. And you know what California was thinking at this point. Don't do anything stupid and blow a field goal chance that will put us up by nine. No doubt. No doubt. Arizona State's defense playing hard and not giving up. And I like this decision here to stop the clock because when it gets down this close here, you, you've got to start using those. Absolutely. You've got to save the time when you can. 336 left, still a six point ball game. Tomorrow afternoon on ABC, BCS bowl bids and spots in conference title games are on the line. Noon Eastern on ABC, Michigan, Ohio State. Then at 3.30 Eastern on ABC, Oregon State against Oregon or Virginia against Virginia Tech. Also at 3.30 Eastern on ESPN, it's Penn State visiting Wisconsin. College football presented by K Jewelers on ABC and college football on ESPN. College football lives here. Tavecchio has already hit from 19, 27, and 48. This is a 30-yard try to make it a two-score game to score again and maybe put it out of reach. And it just got inside the upright. Game of inches. You always hear coaches talk about a game of inches. That ball just hooked inside that upright. What a season he's had, Craig. 19 out of 22. Four of them today. Well, a little quick strike now coming up with Certainly make this game interesting at the end. We'll see what uh, 
Osweiler can do with it, man. Brock's going to come on the field, and the last two Cal drives took up a lot of clock, 11-20. Welcome back to ESPN's College Football Prime Talk, presented by Russell Athletic. 47-38, Cal now with a two-score margin over Arizona State and time running out for the Sun Devils, who are getting ready to receive this kickoff. Yeah, but, but again, keep in mind, a really good return team here. Jamal Miles. He can get them yards in a heartbeat. This is where their speed is so critical. Miles driven into the end zone. He'll bring it out. And nailed inside the 20 yard line. Terrific tackle by Avery Sebastian. Samantha Steele used to live in Phoenix. She knows what the culture is around this program. Samantha, why do you think it has been so difficult to turn this program into one of the Pac-10's premier schools? Well, there are a couple of reasons, guys. One is that it's a transplant town. Not many people are actually from here. I did grow up downtown watching this team, but there aren't many people that did grow up and have that sort of loyalty, I guess I would say. And also, I'll, I'll come back to you after the play. Be completed to sidelines. Also a pro town, right? It's just not the only show in town here, and that makes it difficult. It's much different than what's going on in Tucson with Rich Rod. Obviously, no pro teams down there, and it makes a huge difference. The fan base here gets excited when they win. I mean, anybody who was here for the USC game or the Missouri game would have thought everything's great. They're talking Erickson extension. Well, that can change very quickly with some bad losses here. Osweiler throwing, trying to keep the drive going. A perfect pass to Mike Willie, who dropped it. Well, tonight is is representative of the problems that this school is facing. There aren't a lot of people here, even though the students are out of school for Thanksgiving. And as you mentioned, Samantha, they raised the bar in the middle of the season with the great start they had in what is now Dennis Erickson's fifth year. I, I you know what, I, and I think that it's also a deal to where expectations should be where they are this is a great school it's got a great city and I think they have a hard time understanding why they can't have that type of team year in and year out here Osweiler is going to throw for a first down here Willie makes up for the previous drop by grabbing this one it stops the clock with three minutes left you know drops like Mike Willie just had are not as critical at this point in time I mean the clock stops after that but it's you, you got to limit the bad mistakes on these. And every play takes time. Nice catch there by Ross, who was showing up pretty well in this ball game at the 48 yard line. Again, the clock stops. Uh, smart decision there. Go down. Journey's over. It's not worth the risk of fumbling the football yeah. for another yard or so. Just to put a cap on Dennis Erickson, he has one more year left on his contract. Uh, he said he'll sit down with the athletic director when the season is over and they'll talk about it and see where they're going to go from there. And this one is dropped by Marshall coming out of the backfield. Uh, again, we, we, we said this earlier, Dennis Erickson knows how to coach football, but what he did in 07 and, and in winning 10 games, he created an expectation here based on his resume from years before 07. Sure. And they just haven't been able to get there. And, and I think that, you know, lots of things will be considered when you go into this in the evaluation process. But you have to have a coach who's out there selling the program, who's out there winning and winning big games, uh, and, you know, consistently. When they got to the chance to be in the AP Top 25 earlier this season, you, your team has to understand that and seize the moment. I don't care if you have injuries. Everybody has injuries is the fact that Rich Rodriguez has just been hired at Arizona. Does that up the ante here? I think so. I think it puts pressure and there'll be some competition there in the recruiting wars. Rich Rod's a good football coach and high profile and that comes in and that will add some pressure to them. Third and ten here for Arizona State. They have to succeed on this drive. Osweiler hit as he throws and it's picked off. Cal playing center field, and it's Josh Hill. 
Osweiler got drilled by DJ Campbell who was coming on a blitz. Osweiler hung in there as long as he could, but paid the price. Clancy Pendergrass again, defensive coordinator dialing up a nice job with the blitz, bringing Campbell. And this is one of those where I'm gonna get to you before you get the ball down. He forces the errant throw into coverage downfield and his teammate takes advantage of it. That's why statistically, Cal's defense is right up there at the top. What a shot from Campbell. Yeah, and then finishing it off on the other side. You know, yeah, there's a lot of good things you can do, but Josh Hill, a player who plays a lot of nickel, coaching staff says he sees the whole field, very smart player in the backfield back there. That's teamwork, man. You, you know, you blitz, you put pressure, and you finish it with a pick. And now Cal will go to work on the clock. Arizona State has 10 men within three yards of the line of scrimmage. So Fella gets the carry. Tonight's real deal brought to you by Wendy. Wendy's. So Felly and Anderson at combined 264 yards rushing and four scores. That's pretty good work out of the tailback spot. <laughs> Sounds like you and Dickerson. Yeah. Well, this is one of those games to where So Felly needed to come in and play and do well. Uh, he's been consistent. And uh, I think it was a surprise, C.J. Anderson. But I'm, I'm, I think it's it's a Zach Maynard for me. Y'all y'all oh, heard me in the meetings. I mean, you know, it's like okay, let's see what he's done here. But Zach Maynard came into this football game and from the beginning was throwing bullets. This zone read here where he kept the ball, he had a couple of really nice runs that put a lot of doubt and question marks on this Arizona State defense as to what was going to happen with the ball. He spread them out. Well, to your point. He is completing only 55% of his passes this year. In the way the game is played now, 55% is not very good. Not very good at all. And the accuracy was your criticism of him earlier in the year, and it's very valid. The fact is, he's getting better, and that's great news for Cal. Right, well, that's Jeff Tetford coaching him up, and, and most important to me, and I think this is, this, is, this is validation from what Tetford was saying to the press, the speed of the game is not faster. It's not too fast for Maynard now. Yeah. He's figured out that tempo. And, and that's that's why he's able to make the decisions in the zone read and doing those things like that. Tonight, 19 of 26, that's 73%. That's following up what he did at Stanford, 20 of 30. Yeah, which is 67%. 73% <laughs> is good. Yeah. You that's, know, that's fantastic. You don't and, win a lot of games in 73%. Yes, and, and the way their defense is playing right now, I mean, this is finishing strong for Cal. Uh, Jeff Tetford, yeah. uh, remember, you know, talk about hot seats, they pass that around pretty often. That, that, <laughs> old, that old toilet rim gets, <laughs> goes to a lot of coaches' office. And, yes, and Tetford, does. I think he, he felt a little simmer when he sat down a few times. And, you know, this he has is, he is battled through it. It used to be that athletic directors, school presidents, were the guys who were a little more patient than the fan base. Not anymore. Nobody's patient. Yeah. You have a couple of bad years, they want you out. Anderson plugging way up near the 20. Well, and you know, and for Dennis Erickson, what, just a kind of a final thought for, for Dennis. Uh, again, a good football coach, but, he, but I think it's come down now. It, sometimes it is what it is. At the end of the day, the trend is not good. And, and you know, you, you can make excuses, you can do all you want, Proofs in the pudding sometimes. Yeah. You know, we walk through life and there's there footprints in those sand that we look around and that's what it is. So guys like Vontez Burfick have not helped. You know, not at all. Of course, that's the guy and the guy he, he brought him in here knowing he had an emotion and, and a passion. That's and, right. You're responsible for your own recruiting. Yeah. There's no way around that. And Vontez Burfick, who had built a reputation out of getting personal fouls and making silly decisions after plays. He had had it in check most of this year and in fact had been a target of other teams, but tonight he lost it and after he committed two personal fouls in the same series, he hasn't seen the field since. I, I admire Dennis Erickson and Craig Bray for trying to mentor and, and help him and tutor him along and father figures for him and, and all of those things. You know, some, but at some point, 
that player has to be responsible. That individual person has to be responsible for his actions. And there are consequences for all of our actions that we have in life. Sure. And, and I think that, and they did the right thing tonight. They sat him down. You're being very analytical and uh, philosophical tonight. It's Black Friday. <laughs> Now Cal's going to punt it away <laughs> on fourth and two. Ross waits back at his 32 yard line. They come after the kicker. Cal with a good job getting it out of there. And then Ross, the only one back, is going to let it go. And it dies inside the 40 at the 39 yard line. 41 yard kick under pressure. And only 103 left to go. Well, you know, as you look to the recruiting wars that'll be going on, whatever's going to happen with Dennis Erickson will need to happen sooner than later. There's a lot of shuffling going on, and, and uh, there, there are going to be plenty of openings that take place. Not saying that Dennis is going to be one of those, but uh, th that's you know, the, the tough decisions sometimes have to be made, and they'll make that one soon, I'm sure, here. You keep in mind, there's one year left on his contract. Osweiler. And in this day and age, when things are pretty tight in the budgetary process, not everybody is willing to pull the trigger and pay off a contract either. Yeah, that one's a million and a half bucks. Right? Yes. For Dennis. Yeah, you know what? If, if, you, if you sit there, you can. You can build a case for why Dennis Erickson should maintain his standing as the coach at Arizona State. Yeah. Forgot about that. Done a lot of positive things here. You know, and athletes are, have been upgraded. Uh, he's got good coaches in Bray and Bray and Noel on the offense. I mean, he's he's got the pieces here, you know, but they got to get over the hump. They, they got there this season for a moment and just fell back. And he is a proven commodity. He's coached in six different conferences throughout his career in college. He's been the conference coach of the year at least once in every one of them. And he won two national championships at Miami. Flag is down as this pass is overthrown. And of course, at Miami, he had a really edgy couple of teams there, guys that won a national championship. Some coaches want that persona wherever they are. But they were Holding smart. On the offense, number right. 77. They, the, they had the perfect mentality, but they, but they, but they stopped. under control. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know. And, I, and as for Cal, I mean, this is a this is just a fantastic outing for them. And uh, I, I thought a well played game. They came on the road here and and continued the trend that they had. I mean, they played Stanford tight last week. They certainly did. 31 28. Yeah, they had a shot. Osweiler throws on the run and this one will be incomplete. We 18 seconds to go. I, th I think. Samantha pointed this out earlier in the game. They were tired. Cal's football team was tired. And Tedford gave them off, gave them Monday off. Good decision. Yeah, he took 15 minutes off the length of practices. And at this point in the season, hitting is the last thing you need to do. Fresh bodies, man. That that's so important. That's because Jeff's a former player. He swears he was a really good player. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't everybody? <laughs> But Jeff is a good player and he knows what the body means to an athlete. Underneath to Ross. We got to hand it to Cal. They are going to guarantee themselves a winning record at seven and five pending the bowl game that they will go to. And that's it. ASU will finish its regular season at six and six. Cal at seven and five, and we hit 961 yards in total offense. We never get to a thousand. Day's not complete. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Hope everybody has a great weekend. Absolutely. Our final score here at Arizona State. Cal 47, ASU 38. Coming up next, it's Sports Center. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports for Craig James, Samantha Steele, and our entire ESPN crew. This is Mike Patrick. Thanks for watching, everybody. So long from Tempe, Arizona.